Um, my name is Sarah Jamar. I'm a residential treatment specialist. Your occupation? Right now I work at Northwest Children's Home. We do... What classes should I take if I want to have a career like this? Well, it would help a whole lot if you had an understanding of how the brain works to better understand why kids are doing something. When a child is really angry, they're thinking in their brain stem, and that's where you get a lot of those impulsive, animal-like qualities, so where they're punching walls or they're screaming. How does your job use creative problems on Oh my gosh, all the time. If you have a kid that is throwing a fit, there's tons of interventions that you can use. You can use side talk, you can distract them with a leap that looks like their best friend. I don't know, you just pull things out of the air just to get them, get that thought out of their brain some and into the front of their brain where they're more able to process and have a logical conversation. What was your path to this career? I started out in education. I just wanted to be a general education teacher, but the more fascinating. What advice would you give to me wanting to have a job like yours? Practice patience and try to get to know the kids beyond their behavior or beyond the diagnosis, because a child may have autism, but their diagnosis isn't who they are, it's just a part of who they are. So you really gotta be sure you look past that and get to know them as a person, not what they are on a piece of paper. How does your job use science and or technology? We use technology a lot. That's actually how we track most of our paperwork is we have to do it on the computer so we can email it to social workers or case managers. So having really good keyboarding skills is vital so that you can type up those professional documents and be sure that they get to where they need to be. What does your work have to do with math or engineering? We use math in terms of ratios a lot. Legally, we have to stay in a one to four ratio. So for every four kids, there needs to be one adult. So that's just kind of off the top of my head how we use math. We use those ratios, and then we also use um, time sheets. And so you have to be able to like track. What recommendations do you have for high school students in terms of preparing for a job that incorporates STEM? programs just like you're doing over the summer. You really want to stay sharp on those math and those science and all of those skills because if you don't use it, you lose it. So you want to be sure that you're trying to stay on top of all of that. Do you have any advice on financial decision making when it comes to getting that education? Yeah, do not just sign paperwork. I spent my first freshman year just signing on like, yeah, this loan sounds like fun. And then it turns out like those are crew interests. So you really want to make sure that you're doing your research and you're understanding what kind of financial aid you are getting instead of just being like, eh, I don't know, and putting your name on paperwork. Because that's legally binding. Have you ever had any children that need a special page education? Like me, per like a child of mine? Or what do you mean by that? In general. I've had children in classrooms that I've worked in that definitely have some special education needs. Did you have to go at a slower pace for the child to understand? Sometimes. I mean, it kind of depends what the child's working through on what pace you need to go and what subject it is. Uh, different kids have different intelligences. I have a kid in one of my first grade classrooms that really struggles with reading, but when it comes to math, that child can just fly through it. So it just depends on what the subject is. Do you meet with each individual to make sure they understand what they're learning? We try to. I mean, in a classroom setting, that's quite the struggle because you do have 24, 25 students in there. But a lot of times what I've seen teachers do is they'll do rotations and they'll meet with smaller groups. So it's not necessarily on an individual basis, but on a small group basis. Does it feel like an accomplishment when you see that a child has learned something? Absolutely. I mean, I love those light bulb moments when a child clicks and you can see that, oh my God, now that, you know, Johnny understands that multiplication and division, they're kind of cousins, you know, or whatever that aha moment happens to be. What are the difficulties you have had to face in your profession? Um, parents can sometimes be a struggle because oftentimes they don't understand what we're trying to do and we don't understand what they're doing at home. So trying to find a balance between that communication so that everybody's on the same page and on the same team because really a child learns best when the parents are involved 
I mean, it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes an army to educate one. So the more people you have involved and the more support systems that are there, the better there is.